Misdiagnosis occurs every day in medicine and, and basically what happens is a person goes into a hospital for example, they have certain symptoms such as for example the symptoms of a stroke, maybe the patient has weakness, maybe the patient has a headache or high blood pressure and the doctor or nurses don't recognize it because sometimes doctors and nurses are too busy and they're not listening to what the patient is telling them. Unfortunately, what then happens is the doctor or nurse thinks that the person comes in and has this problem, a headache. Oh, well, that must be uh, something that I can treat with Tylenol. And they give, give the person the medicine and they say, you're okay, you can go home, instead of taking it a step further. In medicine, they have what's called the differential diagnosis, which basically means you come in with certain symptoms and the doctor has to look at all of the possibilities. If you have a headache, it might be something very serious. It could be a stroke. If you have a headache, it might just be something simple, like a headache. But until you do the right testing, for example, having the right radiological tests done, like a CT scan or an MRI of the brain, you're not actually diagnosing what the patient's problem is. So if the doctor thinks that it's the wrong diagnosis, that's what we call a misdiagnosis. The doctor has not diagnosed you with what you actually have. If the doctor treats the wrong condition and then sends you home, that's a big risk for the patient. Because now, whatever that problem was, is continuing in the person's body. Whatever issue it is, is continuing in the person's body. So for example, in the case of a stroke, the most important thing is to diagnose it as either a stroke or what we call a TIA, a transient ischemic attack, which is just a temporary, very short uh, acting stroke that just occurs for a few seconds or a few minutes and then it goes away. If you don't diagnose it, people who are released from the hospital and sent home with those type of symptoms, they later go on to actually have the stroke. So the problem is with misdiagnosis is if the doctor doesn't know what you have, they can't properly treat you. And unfortunately, that often leads in hospitals to the hospital sending the patient home and the patient having to come back in an emergency situation. So that's just one example. There are many types of examples of misdiagnosis. So for example, in a cancer case, somebody comes in with back pain or somebody comes in with chest pain. The doctor does not properly diagnose what the condition is and says, for example, chest pain. Well, did you work out that week, sir? Yes, I did. I, I, I did some exercises at the gym. Okay, well, you probably pulled a muscle in your chest. If the doctor does not properly diagnose it and do the studies, again, with blood work or radiology studies, maybe they don't know that you're having a heart attack or that you had a heart attack. Because by the way, a person who has a heart attack sometimes doesn't have a full-blown uh, emergency. And then later on, they're more susceptible to the second or the third or the fourth heart attack. Same is true in a misdiagnosis case with cancer. I have back pain, for example, or I have pain in my breast. Sometimes the doctor doesn't follow through and determine what's actually causing that pain or those symptoms. And that's critical because if the doctor says, take an aspirin and you'll be fine, that doesn't diagnose what the condition is. And, and that condition is still developing, as in the case of cancer, it's growing and it can get worse. And that's how the patient ends up in a bad situation later. The doctor's job, the doctor's duty is to diagnose you properly with whatever the condition is. And if they can't figure it out, they have to continue testing you until they know what it is. That's what's called the differential diagnosis. If you think it's one thing, but it's actually, you know, you do the tests and you determine it's not that issue, you have to continue testing the patient instead of saying to the patient, well, it's not brain cancer, you can go home from the hospital. That's not proper medicine. You have to diagnose what the patient's symptoms, conditions are.